Mm. Buzz is a really good thing, you know? Yeah. Jim, I was really surprised. My, uh, get your, get your musket ready. You guys come over and get a chair. I'm a little bit long winded. You'll need to sit before I'm done. <laughs> I was ready to go over there and turn it on for you. Go over. If I do it right, I'd make sure the shuttle shutters up and <laughs> Make sure you hit record, don't. Not Melina. I'll see her tomorrow. Is he still going to the Sure is. I'm going to be coming on. Well, you come right on out. It took us like three hours to get here. That one time the tunnel was closed. So we went, we got a scenic tour of the Mon sure. Valley. It is, get over to Route 30. it is open this direction if you want to come to one of Are you, this direction, right? Are you ready, Hagen, or? Okay. Actually, all you really need to do is get on uh, the Triborough. Or bring her right in the Pastor, would you uh, leave us a prayer, please? Sure. Take Route 137. Father, we thank you for gathering us here this evening. And we ask, Lord, that you would meet and guide Hagen in this discussion as he shares information that perhaps you might be the benefit from. Thank you, Lord, for the wealth of knowledge that you have given you. We ask, Father, that you would help us to retain as much as we need. Yes, Lord. We go forward to serve you in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. So, man. Well, I think I know all of you, or at least most of you, those that I don't know, or at least I've met, and I thank you for being here tonight. I'm going to start off with asking you if you would turn off your cell phones, as I'm trying to do with mine. Um, also, I would certainly appreciate, I know how expensive it is to do things like uh, Gary is doing here, and I know that it's, uh, he's having trouble with bills and so forth, and if you would uh, be generous in giving a donation to him tonight, I'd sure appreciate it. Uh, I've contributed to myself because I know the expense of doing these things, and, and uh, Gary can sure use your help. With that said, uh, I appreciate Pastor praying for what I'm doing tonight, and I hope that you will pay close attention because I'm going to tell you some things on three subjects, and I'm going to show you how this ties together and what to do about it. The subject that I'm going to speak about is the common law liens on your property. The common law lien is a protection for your property, and I'll go into that after, after I explain these things. The common law, uh, I'm sorry, the common law grand jury will be one of the things I'm talking about, and the common law pure trust organization. I believe I spoke some before, but some of you may not have been here the last time I spoke here, about the common law trust. I did not speak about the common law lien, as I recall. So I'm going to do the common law lien first. The common law lien is a constitutional thing where, and I'm going to give you an example, if you purchase a property with a home or without a home, it doesn't matter, a property, period. And you put, let's say the property is a $100,000 property. You put down $20,000 on that property. You now have an interest in that property. Let's say you mortgage the other eighty thousand, and then you pay on that property for twenty years of that eighty thousand dollar mortgage at whatever interest rate you have. And for the ease of figures, let's say you pay fifty thousand dollars on the eighty thousand dollar mortgage, you now have a seventy thousand dollar investment. You make improvements on that property. That property, the improvements that you make on that property has a fair market value. You should seek a, a whether you do it yourself or you have a contractor do it, you should seek a contractor's uh, quote 
in doing what you did to the property and add that to that value. So let's say, let's say you add a room, a porch, a driveway, whatever, whatever it is that you add, for ease of figures again, I'm going to use $30,000. You now have $100,000 into this property already and you still owe on it. So also a reasonable figure for value of the property that you gain just for the fact that you own it, the peace of mind, the memories, the things that makes that property valuable to you, such as mine was. I raised my family there. I had that property for roughly 30 years. But unfortunately, the property caught fire and burned down. So that part did not have value, but the property still had value because that was my homestead. That's where I raised my family. A reasonable figure, and no one has ever questioned this figure to my knowledge, is $3,000 a year to give value to that property that would be important to you. So you would have another $60,000, 20 years times three, on top of that to add to that $100,000, you would now have $160,000 in value to your property. You only paid $100,000 in its entirety once it's paid for, but you paid interest on it. You paid taxes on it. You paid all these other things that you paid, you paid into it. That also adds value, even though some may say it's not a value, you had to give up some of your labor to pay the taxes to do all those things, so it adds that value to it. That being part of that $3,000 a year that I'm telling you about, and it may be more, but it should be and must be reasonable. So it, your figure might work out to be $4,500 a year instead of $3,000. It might work out to be $2,500 a year, but $3,000 no one has ever questioned. So it's a safe figure that I'm using. So you now have a $160,000 property. You should file a common law lien against that property. Now, once that is filed, once, once that is written up and it's filed into the recorder of deeds in the county, it now is a matter of record and it takes precedent over every other lien except a mechanics lien. If you had a contract to build a garage and you didn't pay him for it and he takes you to court for non-payment, and the court awards him the money, but you, he, I mean, he can't sell your property and take it from you, but he can put a lien against that property, you can't sell it without paying that mechanic's lien. And that's the only lien that takes precedent over the common law liens. So if the, let's say you can't pay the mortgage. All of a sudden you get hurt, you lose your job, whatever reason, you can't make the mortgage payments. The bank can't foreclose on it without paying the $160,000 lien that you have on it. You only owe, let's say, $20,000 left on the mortgage, and they want to foreclose on your property for $20,000, and they'll sell it, and you'll never see a dime of it, I can guarantee you. I don't know anybody that ever has. That being said, they must pay you the $160,000 before they can take that and sell it, because you, because you clouded the title with that $160,000 lien that you put on the property. Well, if you already have a mortgage on it, you can still do it. It the mortgage doesn't take precedent over your rights. The right to secure your property, which is in several places in the Constitution, is a right that cannot be taken away. What if, what if they sent you a letter tell, telling you they're going to foreclose on you? It doesn't matter what they send you. It, it, I mean, it, it, it's irrelevant. Even, so if you, it's, even if it's already in court? Even if it's already in court, it doesn't matter. You still, it can't, your rights cannot be regulated or removed. This is a right. It's a, it's a right protected by the Constitution and it cannot be taken away. The IRS sends you a letter and claims that you owe them a million dollars. Really? You never made a million dollars in your life. And they do this all the time. Don't ever think they don't. And they will file a lien or a claim in the court against your property. Their claim does not take precedent over yours. Even if they take you to court and they get a judgment, they still have to pay the common law lien before they can take the property and do what they're going to do with it. So you, it gives you a, a, a security around your property that your rights cannot be removed. The right of property is part of the Constitution. It makes it very clear in several places, not just one. So that being said, that gives you some idea about the common law lien and why you should do it. 
You should do it even if nobody is trying to take it from you. You still should put the common law lien against it. If you want to do that, I can do that for you. And I do charge for it, but it's well worth it. It's, it's a security that you can't get any other way. Now I'm going to move into the common law PTO, Pure Trust Organization. I also rate this. You can transfer your property, it's not a transfer action, you can exchange your property into a Pure Trust Organization and name and a, a, a fiduciary officer which is you are then, you then become the exchanger. So you will be known as the exchanger at that point. So you exchange your property into the trust for 100 units of beneficial interest. You're not an interest holder, you're a holder of 100 units of beneficial interest. The fiduciary officer, if you would name me, for example, uh, as fiduciary officer for your property, I don't own your property, but the trust does. You no longer own it. With ownership comes liability. So by putting it in the pure trust organization, you have now secured your property that cannot be touched by anyone unless they have a claim against the pure trust organization and then they got to go to court and fight me if I'm your fiduciary officer to get it. And I'll tell you right now, they'll lose. Because a, a PTO is a fiction. It's like a corporation. It can't do anything on its own. It must have someone to do it for them. But you, being the holder of beneficial interest, will benefit from whatever happens in the trust. You are the only one that can benefit from it. The fiduciary officer cannot take your property and benefit himself or herself from that property. So, in putting it in there, you create an ironclad wall of protection around your property from the Internal Revenue Service, from the property tax assessors, from, from the township uh, zoning officers, from all these people who would take it away from you and, and harm you because you are, don't possess the knowledge to defend it. <coughs> so let them go ahead and sue you. Don't even say a word. Let them send all these papers and everything, lay them on the shelf, give me a call, let me know about it, let me know what's going on, get copies to me, and I will say nothing. But at some point, they're going to file an action against you and take you to court. Go ahead and go to court. And when they make their case, they go through this whole smear, and the judge says, what does the, the defendant have to say? I don't own it, judge. It's not mine. And the judge then wants to know who has legal control of that property. And here's the IRS or whoever standing over here saying, well, I don't know. I don't know who has legal control of it. So then they have to go back to the records, which they usually don't do, and find out who has legal control of the property. So they'll find out that it's in a PTO and that the legal control is in the hands of a, of a fiduciary officer. They don't have a claim against him or the PTO. Their claim is against you. They can't even file an action against the PTO. But if they try it, I will appear and protect it for you. And I guarantee you again, they will lose. Why can't they file an action? Because the PTO, the PTO cannot do anything in and of itself. And the fiduciary officer has no liability except to operate that pure trust organization under Article 1, Section 17 of the Pennsylvania Constitution, where the government cannot interfere with the obligation of contracts. You have contracted with the PTO to take possession of your property, and then the PTO, through the fiduciary officer, will represent that property. It does nothing of its own, and a fiduciary officer is not liable for what the PTO does, nor are you as a holder of beneficial interest. So this gives you that ironclad wall of protection from those people coming after your property or your assets. And it's a lawful thing that they cannot touch, and they won't even try it. They don't want to mess with that because they know the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to walk up to the IRS officer and say, excuse me, officer, I need to see your oath of office, as is required under the Pennsylvania Constitution, Article 6, Section 3, and Article 6, Clause 3 of the United States Constitution. We'll see it again. We'll get he doesn't have it. The next time These zoning officers do not have it. These people don't have the, the oath that is required of them, so they are impersonating an officer. 
not only am I going to uh, defend your property, but I'm also going to file an action against them in a criminal nature as well as a civil nature, and I will make money for you off of them because they impersonated an officer. The first time. There's about 36 felonies that I'm going to put against them. But I start with that oath. Okay? Now this stuff all ties together. When you when you see how this works, you will be you will be amazed. And I have a friend right now in uh, Washington Township, who the township has been trying their darndest to make him tie in to the sewage that they put in illegally, and and brought it to the edge of his property, and and uh, he put it, he put his property into trust. And I am the fiduciary officer, and they can't do nothing. They can't touch anything. They send bills all the time. I send letters back to them telling them, I rebut your claim. I have no, no contract with you. You have no authority to have put that thing on the property, and I'm about to file an action against them in a criminal nature to force them to take it off of there and to pay damages for what they did do. So this is the kind of thing that I do. This is the thing, kind of thing. I know the court system inside and out, and I know how to, how to handle these things. Most lawyers. And, and I, I mean no offense to anyone, but most lawyers do not know the rules of court. They don't know the rules of evidence. And if they do, then they won't try to do something that they know they can't prove. They must prove who has legal control of this property. They yes, must so. prove that they have a legitimate claim against those who have that legal control of that property. You no longer own it. Remember what I said? You no longer own it. And I've had people say, man, what's going to keep you from taking my property for yourself? You have a protector. You assign someone you know and trust, non-related to you, to watch what I do. If I ever take one cent for myself, you fire me and put criminal charges against me. There is built-in protections to keep me from taking advantage of your assets. God forbid, what if something happened to you? I'm training other people to pick up where I leave off. Okay? So hopefully you will work with them. And if this, this is a freedom thing. This, I'm doing this for freedom, not for money. I don't need much money. But I am doing it for freedom. Okay? So you can you can do this, and there will be people. There are people already who I can send you to, and I will do that. If I write a trust for you, I will give you a name who can pick up right where I leave off, right now. If you, if, if you so desire. So you're saying you could like just put paying the taxes and they can't... No, I did not say that. Oh, okay, that's right. I didn't say that at all. But I said they can't take your property and sell it for taxes. Because, number one, you don't own it. Who do they send the tax bill to? Yeah. Did you have a question? Yeah. Uh, you had made reference to the PA Constitution where the government cannot interfere with contracts. Article 1, Section 17. Do you know any uh, specifics where they have inter intervened and in uh, interfered with a contract? They do not do that when they know it exists. This is why I said, you say nothing. Why should you give them information? Don't. Let them spend their money, their time, and their wheels. Let them take it to court, and then you walk in and let them do their thing. Let the judge sit, back, sit there and lean back knowing that he's going to side with them. And then when he says, what does the defense have to say? I don't own it, judge. It's not mine. They sued the wrong entity. And that's all you do. That's all you need to do. You, you need to do nothing else. Then they've got to find out who has legal control, and and if they may, and the judge is going to rule on this. The judge will dismiss the case. He may dis dis dismiss the case with prejudice because he knows there is a contract. I don't know. It's up. To, it depends on how uh, uh, energetic the judge is. The judge might might go check it out for himself. And some of them actually do. Some of them will actually look at the records and see who has legal control of the property before the hearing. But he can't come in and testify. But if he knows and he says nothing, now if he testifies, I'm going to get it. He better not testify because I'm going to call him to the stand as a material witness if he does. Same thing I'll do with an attorney. And I've done it quite a number of times. And I'll tell you right now, they don't like it. No, they don't. I've had attorneys tell me, you can't call me to the stand, I'm the attorney. I said, it's all right, you testified, you made yourself a material witness when you testified, so you're going on the stand whether you like it or not. I don't care what you do from here. You're going on the stand, and I'm going to cross-examine you because you testified on behalf of your alleged clients. And I'll do the same thing to a judge. And the judge will have to accuse himself because now he has a personal bias. He cannot sit on the case anymore. But 
those are legalities. We're getting into the legalese parts of things that might be overwhelming to you. I don't know. I hope the things that I say inform you and give you some satisfaction of knowing that there are avenues you can use to protect yourself and your property. Hagan, can I interject just one second? Maybe, yes. maybe this will help see how effective you're being. How many here own property? Okay. How many, when you leave here, believe you need to go put a common law lien on your property? What was that? What was the question? How, when you leave here, how many believe you need to put a common law lien on your property? Okay, are, are you convinced of it now? Yeah. Okay, is anybody not convinced that they need to put a common law lien on their property? If you, if you, if, say if you put a lien on your property now and you keep it for 10 years, the lien stays it. on forever. But okay. what about the, the, the maybe you made more improvements <coughs> in that 10 year period and, and there's 10 more years of the $3,000 a year? You Do can you add, have to put another one you can, on? You can periodically add to that lien. You can revise that up. You can revise that lien up to the amount that you have on it. But let me, let me point something out to you, okay? I don't want you to make snap decisions. I want you to hear what I'm saying to you. And I want you to take time to think about this, okay? Make a smart decision. You don't make a smart decision with special staff professionals. Take time and think about what you want to do. If you want to do a, a common law lien, take the time to think about it before you do it. If you have further questions, you're welcome to give me a call. You know, my phone number is 352-502-2060. Is, uh, uh, and Gary and others that you know here know my phone number. If you don't, if you forget it or something, you can get it from them. You call me and I'll answer your question. Francis? Doesn't it have to be a mechanics lien? I can't hear you, I'm sorry. Doesn't it have to be a mechanics lien to have precedence over the IRS or anything else? I, I said that. Well, you said a common law lien. I, all I heard was common law lien. Common no, I said a mechanics lien is the only one that takes precedence over the common law lien. It must be paid first before the common law lien. The common law lien is second only to that. He's asking if the mechanics lien will be the only one that the IRS can penetrate. Somebody else puts in the IRS. The IRS cannot penetrate the common law lien. That's his question. Okay. So the improvements to my property, the sixty thousand or whatever, that can't be the mechanics lien. That would come under just my own common law lien. Doesn't the mechanics lien have to go to a mechanic or somebody else other than me? Yeah, you can't. You can't put it. My own mechanics lien, right? But if I make improvements to my property, I guess I can put some kind of a common law lien. That adds to you. You would use figures. That's why I suggested that you have a contractor give you a quote on what it would cost you to do that project, really, before you do it. Then that you have a secure amount that you can put onto the lien that's verifiable as to what the amount of improvements would be, because he's going to include labor, materials, uh, overhead, and profit. You have the right to the same thing if you do it yourself. So there's no there's no problem with doing that. But if you have a contractor do it, you need to pay the contractor because he can get a mechanics lien on the property. You'll never be able to sell it because he he like you clouded the title. With a clouded title, who wants a title that they can't get a clear title? Nobody does. So you would you would prevent, or, or you would have a clouded title when he files his lien, but you also have a clouded title when you file your lien. Because you have the right to that. That's an asset to you. That's an interest to you. You're a holder of interest into that property the same as the mortgage company is. But the mortgage company, here's the, here's the saving grace. I... I uh, uh, I did a, a interview with the loan officer for the bank that I deal with. And I interrogated him with some questions that I would have to ask him on the witness stand if, if he didn't answer them for me in this deposition. And I asked him certain questions. I said, what did you loan to Hagen Smith in this document? He said, well, I loaned you $25,000. I said, you did? Where'd you get it? Well, he said, I got it from the Federal Reserve, the World Bank. I said, really? Well, where did they get it? 
He said, I don't know, but I got it from them. I said, I think you're lying. I think you do know where they got it. And I think you are co-conspirator to the criminal empire known as the Federal Reserve System. And you will answer my questions either here or in court. You need to start answering now. He says, I decline to answer that question. I take the Fifth Amendment of that. I said, then you're guilty of what I just said. Even though it is supposed that you are not guilty, you are guilty because I, I, you have to give me names. You testified already as to where you got the money. There has to be a name attached to where you got the money from. You do have to give me that. That's by court rule. And if you refuse to do it, I'll get a court order. I'll file, I'll file for a subpoena. And you will get it, and you will give me that name, and I will get that person on the stand. And if I found that you lied to me, which I know you did, I'm going to demand that you be held in contempt of court and be put in jail. Who was that name? That's the loan officer for First National Bank. Now, um, that being said, here's what actually happened. They caught you go in and you fill out an application for a loan at the bank. They tell you, you fill out all the information. They want tons of information from you. They want to know what assets you have. They want to know where you work, how much you make, how much your bills are. They want to know all of this stuff. <clears throat> what they do then is they take that application and they monetize it. They send it over to the people that they get their money from. And those people decide whether or not you have the credibility for them to, to loan you the money. If they approve it, then they print the money tenfold. They send it back to the bank as a loan with two at 2% interest. And what it actually happens then is, is you go in and sign the note. The bank never signs it. You sign the note. It's a unilateral contract. What they did was is they borrowed your credit, printed the Federal Reserve notes on your money, and they loaned your credit back to you. They should have paid you for that signature. They should have given you the $100,000 because you authorized them to print a million. And they did that and they charged interest on every dime of it, including you. They stole from you through deception. <coughs> he knew what I was getting at and he knew where this was going. And he said, Hagan, until you put me on the witness stand, I am not answering those questions. He said, because the day I answer them, I will have no more job. So... This is the power that you have in your own hands. I know how to get around these people. I know how to scare them. I know how to make them run. What if, we, what if an entity stole a property from you with um, less, you know, let's say you legitimately owed somebody taxes or whatever. What's legitimate about that? Well, in their opinion. In their <laughs> that's, opinion. that's a debate we won't get into. Right, right, in their opinion. And, and let's say that they stole your property. It's now no longer... Uh, in your name. Can a common law lien be placed on that property for the difference between what they stole it for and what you had in it? Absolutely. And and you can file a motion of reprimand to get it back because it was unlawfully taken from you. Your interest was taken and ignored for their interest. The Constitution prohibits that, it forbids it, and it cannot happen by contract or by any other means because the Uniform Commercial Code prevents deception in contractual agreements. If you were deceived into signing a contract without full disclosure, then the contract is null and void on its face. So yes, the answer is yes. Okay. So I can find, I can, if I had a property foreclosed six months ago, they took it, sold it at the sheriff's sale six months ago, somebody else's name is now on the deed, I can still file a common law. A absolutely, and it clouds the title. Even though the title may have been issued by the court clear, the court had no such authority to do so. The judge is sitting there with an oath the same as, as a lawyer or anybody else. Anybody in government is required to have the oath under, uh, before mentioned, Article 6, Section 3. Okay? If they violate that oath, they have given up the public trust. Anything that they do can and will be, uh, um, will be uh, uh, avoided, uh, will be voided. It's a void judgment on space. A void judgment does not need to be verified by a judge. You file a void judgment. You put in the memorandum of law supporting your void judgment, and it stands for what it says. You file it as an affidavit. The judges do try to take them and overrule them. They have no such authority to do so. If they do it, you bring an action against the judge. And the judges can't. It's a 42 U.S.C. 1983 action. I'm going to switch gears a little bit now. I'm going to talk about another check 
against government oppression <coughs> and your property being taken from you. 16 Amgur, 2D256. I would encourage you to look it up, read it. There's an article, if you type, type in 16 Amgur, 2D256, you'll get a whole list of sites that come up. I believe the very first one, uh, there's a fellow from Texas, his name is John Rollin. R-O-L-A-N-D. John, J-O-H-N, Rollin. Megan, how, how do you spell that, what you said, 16 Amgur? 16 Amgur, A-M-J-U-R-E. American jurisprudence. Yeah, it means American jurisprudence. Bobby knows what it is, I think. Oh, we do have it. Yes. Yeah. Can, can it's I, on one of the papers he gave us. Can I make a copy of that on the computer real quick and just pass it out? If you want to, it's not my material. How would I, <laughs> how would I look it up? What am I going to look under? Well, the first, when you type in what I just wrote, the 16 amps here, 2D256, a list of sites will come up. I believe it's the first one by John Rollin, G-O-H-N-R-O-L-A-N-D. Now, what that says in there, and John Rollin happens to be well respected even by the Supreme Court justices. He is the utmost expert known in this country, to my knowledge, um, and, and I've looked into this. I don't know anybody else more, uh, more of an expert on the Constitution than he is, or on law for that fact. But John Rollin said, and he, he enumerated after the 16 Amateur <coughs> site, where it says a con unconstitutional act is not law, it's not binding on anybody. It creates no office, and, and, and uh, no man has to uh, obey it, and no judge has to enforce it. He went further and said, it is not just the law that must be obeyed, but it is the duty of every man and woman in this country to enforce the Constitution, because the Constitution is our law to the government. We're the master, they're the servant. We need to start learning to act like masters, not like servants, because what we do here is... And I'm going to get to the common law jury in a minute, but I want you to understand your duties as, as a man or a woman uh, in, in relation to this. Uh, you being the master, it's your duty to enforce the Constitution on the public officers that we put into those positions. Those that we put into those positions that put someone else into a position as an agent or whatever are also bound by that same oath and are required to take and subscribe to it. We must enforce it upon them. It is your duty. John Rollins said, it is not just a right, but it is your duty. When you see a public official doing something that they do not have the authority to do, that you gather the information for a presentment to the common law grand jury. And the common law grand jury, if, if sufficient evidence is there for a trial, will hand down a presentment to the county sheriff. The county sheriff will arrest and order the district attorney to criminally prosecute. This is how this common law grand jury works. And the common law grand jury is you. We the people. Whenever you sign things, and I'm going to say this, don't sign nothing with the government. I'm talking about driver's license. I'm talking about marriage license. I'm talking about hunting license, fishing license. I'm talking about voter registrations, especially voter registrations. Because number one, if I ask you, let me ask some of you, anybody that wants to tell me, is anybody in here a citizen of the United States of America? Not unless we say we are. Well, wait a minute. Is, does anybody believe you are? Well, I appreciate that. <laughs> but let me tell you, you are because you say you are, as he said. Okay? The very first uh, question on a voter registration form says, are you a citizen of the United States of America? If you answer no to this uh, question, do not fill out this form. Well, why is it telling you that? If you want to vote, why do you have to answer that question? Well, we need to know who you are. Really? I mean, do I look Asian? Do I look, uh, do I look something other than maybe I'd be American? But are there other people who would look like me that's not an American? That wasn't born here? <clears throat> we have this little thing that they do... They did to me six years late, called a birth certificate. And that's something created by the government. Don't have a picture on it. Mine don't have any fingerprints or footprints or anything else on it. Some of them do today, but mine don't. So how do they prove who I am? It's the people who know me in my community. 
the people who are there who know that I was born here. And we only need two witnesses. The Constitution says that. We need no more. So if you want to know, am I really Hagen Smith, go to the place where I was born and ask if anybody knows me. Ask if anybody was around when I came into being in this country. And if they know where I came into being. Take a look at that birth certificate that was created not by my authority, not even by my mother's authority. She's the one that brought me into this world. And I say that because my mother died when I was born. She died of childbirth. The doctor died the following morning. There was nobody to, there to verify that I came into being, other than those around who believed I did. But they created my birth certificate six years late. Now, they did put my name in uppercase letters. I'm not an ends legis. It wasn't put on there. If there's an ends legis named Hagen Smith, an ends legis means a creation of government. <clears throat> it's a legal term. So, and you can look it up. I encourage you to look it up. Because everything that the government does with you primarily, they write your name in uppercase letters. They don't have any authority over you unless you grant it. I talked to a state policeman three days ago at a friend of mine's place. He knew this stuff that I'm talking about for the most part. And he, he looked at me. I had never met this man before in my life. And he was talking about, he, when, after I introduced myself to him, he knew I didn't have a driver's license. So when he was talking about pulling people over and doing different things, he excluded me. He purposely said, but it don't include you because you don't have the contract. Remember I said, don't sign nothing. Okay? He said to me, you don't have the contract. He knew and, and he said, I don't have authority over you. You see, if you sign these things, you grant them authority. Volunteer. He, yes. Yeah. He also told me this. He said, Hagen, I have this little rule book. He gave my friend a copy. He's going to get me a copy. Uh, this little rule book that the police have to operate by. It tells them what to do, how to do it, and how to get you to consent. Have any of you ever, has, has everybody in here been pulled over by a police officer at one time or another? Oh, yeah. yeah has anybody once. not been pulled over? Yeah. No. Oh, you've never been pulled over? <laughs> well, you got one covered. I've been, <laughs> I've been pulled over. Um, he, he somebody was somebody, get, his, me, somebody said, get his plate number. <laughs> I already know this stuff, okay? But I let him talk. I want to hear it from him, okay? He said, why do you think when I walk up to your window, I tell you things like, where are you going to in such a hurry? Or, have you had anything to drink today? How many drinks have you had today? I ask those things to get you to consent to my authority, because I don't have it. And he said, the thing that makes me the most angry, this guy turned out to be a pretty nice guy. He said, the thing that makes me most angry about people is, they answer my questions. Why don't they shut the hell up? He said, I feel like just reeking it, reaching in and choking them and telling them, shut up. Don't answer my questions that I have. You can go about your business. Okay? This is what's wrong in this country. We feel compelled. We're scared. We have fe we're full of fear. We feel compelled to answer questions that we do not have to answer and should not answer. The best thing to you can say to that officer is, when he asks you a question, I decline to answer that question. When he says, let me see your driver's license, owner's car, and proof of insurance. Officer, would you punish me for refusing to give evidence against myself that can be used in the court of law? You didn't tell him you have a driver's license. You didn't tell him you didn't. You ask him a question. Now, what's he going to say? No. If he does, he can't use it. If he says yes, he'll punish you. He you might want to think about something. Yeah. I encourage you never to give any document to the government or any government officer that you cannot or that you should not give them and that includes any evidence of a contract. Here is what I give them in that situation. It has my image on it. It tells them who and what I am. It gives them my birth certificate number and it's a notarized document among some other information that they must return this to me immediately. It is my property doesn't belong to them. Government did not issue this. But this is an affidavit that stands up in any court in the United States. Okay? This is all they get. That's only under threat, duress, and coercion. I will not sign anything. But he's got my name. He knows my address. So if he's going to send something, he can send it. 
but it gives him no authority, period. It's not a contract. It's not a contract with him at all. Now, <clears throat> what do I do about it if he drags me out of the car and beats the hell out of me? It's easy, yeah. Does all of these things that he has no lawful authority to do. Because you said the things that I told you to say, and uh, we're putting up a website. I will have this stuff on the website free to you to help you with this thing. You can print it out and carry it with you and repeat those things to the officers whenever they say it. Okay? If he tells you to get out of the car, ask him, am I under arrest? And he'll give you some smart -like comment like, well, you may be. If you don't get out of that car, I'm going to drag you out. Get out of the car. Take your keys out of the ignition. Put them in your pocket. Lock the doors and close the doors behind you. Get out of the car and look him straight in the eye and say, Officer, I do not consent to any search or seizure whatsoever. You understand me? Then do whatever he says. Don't get yourself beat up. Be nice about it. Be straightforward about it and firm about it, but do not be disrespectful. Because these guys are trained, and he told me this, they are trained to move it to the next level, to escalate it to violence, so they can throw you on the ground and they will work you over. They're trained to do this. Some will and some won't. <coughs> that was his words. He said about 30% of the cops won't do this to you, but the other 70 will. They can't wait to do it. So that was good stuff. For me to hear that coming from a state policeman's uh, mouth is good stuff. But he happens to believe in the Constitution. He happens to believe in our rights and so forth. And he said he will do everything he can not to punish you because, just because they want him to. But he does have a job. <coughs> and like all the other ones, he wants to protect his job and his retirement. So he's going to do what he has to according to that little book. Now that being said, what do you do? The common law grand jury, and I'm going to urge you, is anybody here not from Allegheny County? Uh, what counties are you from? Westmoreland. There you go, uh, Tom. Well, who's West, the you're Westmoreland? I'm going to encourage all of you here today to consider becoming a grand juror, a common law grand juror. In, in America, the Constitution begins with we the people. It doesn't say, we the citizens, we the subjects. It says, we the people. If someone asks you, I'm coming back to that voter registration now. If someone asks you, are you a citizen of the United States, tell them no. Are you a citizen of Pennsylvania? No. Well, what are you? I'm one of the people. That's what you are. We are the masters. You are one of them. <coughs> You need to know that and you need to act like it. I'm one of the people. Well, where do you reside? I don't. What do you mean? You don't live in Pennsylvania? No. I, for the time that I'm here, I do. I am domiciled at, and that's on my ID, I am domiciled at whatever you say you are. That doesn't mean you're there permanent, because none of us are here permanent. Anywhere. It doesn't matter where it is. I was in Pennsylvania since 1968, and I re um, recently moved to Florida. So I was only domiciled here. I wasn't residing here. Words are important to know. Words will be used against you if you don't know what they mean. Being a grand juror, being a common law grand juror, if any government officer does something they're not supposed to do, it doesn't matter who or what they are, go to the grand jury and write a formal complaint. Become a grand jury yourself and help to make this happen in every county. I'm working on Butler and Allegheny right now to try to get that done. I've got some other people working on several other counties. Clarion, Jefferson, uh, Marion, Crawford. We've got several counties uh, that we're working on. Westmoreland, Tom is working on. So I'm encouraging you, and I'm going to speak, I guess, next Thursday night in Uniontown, is it? Fayette County, yeah. Fayette County. Uniontown. And I'm going to urge them people to do the same thing. But get with, Gary has agreed to take on the leadership in the beginning to get this grand jury 
uh, happening, right, Gary? Yes, sir. And and I encourage you from Allegheny County, get with Gary. You need 25 people. You need 23 grand jury members. You need at least two alternates. I recommend seven. Because if somebody can't make it to a meeting, the alternates, at least two alternates should be attending the meeting. So if there's two people can't make it to the meeting, two alternates can sit in in their stead. Mm -hmm. And if you investigate and find sufficient information, you write a presentment. You need a chairman. This thing gets, gets worked just like any other organization would, but you have to have a foreman. You elect a jury foreman. That foreman will write the verdict of the grand jury, and you will hand, he will deliver that to the sheriff and instruct the sheriff that it, it's his duty to make an arrest because you found sufficient grounds for indictment. And that he is instructed, therefore, then to indict that person, uh, order the indictment of that person through the district attorney. The prosecuting attorney. Now, Higgins, with power comes responsibility, or possession comes responsibility. That's right. What if, if what if they make a silly, or someone finds that they made a silly indictment? The indictment comes from the from the district attorney, prosecuting attorney, not the grand jury. Grand jury hands down true bills or presentments. So they make they make a presentment. They take it to the sheriff. They say, arrest this man. The sheriff looks at it and says, this isn't sufficient. Well, the grand jury has more power than the sheriff does. Well, what I'm, what I'm saying, though, is the, the sheriff, let's just assume for a minute. He's duty-bound. Duty I know what you're saying. He's duty-bound. If the sheriff refuses to do it, the grand jury has the power to remove the sheriff from office because of negligence. He now has committed a crime. You can remove him from office because of negligence, and you can appoint an interim sheriff to serve until an election can be held to to elect another sheriff. Well, what if the sheriff takes that to the prosecuting attorney and do that? Then you bring an action. You bring a presentment against the district attorney or the prosecuting attorney. They're they're negligent in their duty. You you will not believe. I mean, you're the master. Remember, you're the master. And there's a process. There's a lawful process by which you you do your business. How many American counties have grand juries now? Constitutional. The only one. Juries? The only one. Well, there's or two that I know of. There's one in New York, and I, I forget the county, but there's one in Marion County, Florida, where I'm at, and the reason it's there is because of me. Okay. Has either one of those made a presentment yet? Yes. You had it in your hand a few minutes ago. Were they? But did, nobody got arrested, though. No. That's because that's because Larry Clayman doesn't know his business. Okay. He's the lawyer. He's the prosecuting attorney. He doesn't know his business. So we are taking steps presently. Uh, I talked to the people this morning and yesterday about that. We're taking <coughs> steps to either force him to do his job correctly by having the sheriff arrest or... But now the sheriff can't arrest Obama, Biden, or... And this is a problem that we have. The presentment was handed down against uh, uh, President Obama, uh, Vice President Biden, and Hillary Clinton. They're not in Marion County, Florida, so they can't be arrested there. And a the sheriff can't go outside of his county to make an arrest. They would have to come there for him to arrest them. But he does have the authority to do that. It's not likely that he will. The sheriff, uh, Pastor John, was with me right up there in Butler County when I talked to the sheriff and sloop up there in Butler County about doing that very thing, and he told me point blank he won't do it. So I won't do it. I said, then at some point we will have a grand jury here and we'll remove you from office. He thought it was a joke. He kind of laughed and stickered and tried to make a joke. Mm -hmm. He looked at Pastor John to support him. Pastor John says, I'm with Hagen. <coughs> so, but this is the power you hold in your hands. You know, <clears throat> I hope that I can instill passion in you for freedom if you don't already have it. This is about freedom. It's all it is about. It's not about anti-government. It's not about right-wing extremism. It's not about any of that stuff. This is about you maintaining your freedom and passing that freedom along to your posterity, your, your wives, your children, your kids, your grandkids, all of the above. That's what this is about. It's about love, isn't it, Hagen? It is. Loving your is. country, it loving your fellow uh, countrymen, oh, loving your property that, that you, you work for. It's given to you by God. Loving the, the rights that God has granted to every living human being. Yes. It has nothing to do with hate. 
That's right. Hey, good question for you. Well, I'll go home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks. Um, suppose the grand jury does deliver a true bill and uh, you know the sheriff arrests whoever, an officer that abused somebody or a judge that, that you know violated his oath of office, any you know, anybody the people that we might want to go after, doesn't it just end up in court in front of a normal judge that's gonna hear the evidence and chances are throw the case? Well what about an abnormal judge? What is a judge? <laughs> The judge is a judge, whether he's normal or abnormal, it doesn't matter. My, my point being, and I'm not trying to put you on the spot, my point being, I know where you're going with this. The judge is just going to side with them. Well, let me tell you something. If you know the rules of court, you can make the judge do his job. And if the judge do, doesn't do his job, it's your duty then to bring presentment against him or her. There's ways of doing this. It's right in the court rules. The court rules are on your side, believe me. And you can make the court operate the way it's supposed to. The judge is not the trier of the facts. He is the arbiter of the facts. He is the arbiter to decide what facts can come in, what facts can't come in. But if he, if he refuses to allow facts in that should be in, then he has prejudiced the case. He is biased against you or someone, and he has proven that, which violates his, the rules and the canons that, that uh, he is bound by. District attorney is the one prosecuting the case for us. That's right. They're all going to drag their feet and omit half the evidence and side with the <laughs> right. Well, if they, if they do, you go back to the grand jury against him. You see, this, let me tell you something. So we're cleaning it up. Don't. That's right. Exactly right. That's, what, that's what we're doing. Once we do, okay. we're forcing these people back into compliance <clears throat> with the law. Yeah. Period. The law begins with the Bible. God is the the number one rule of law. His His commandments are the law. Okay. The second, the second thing is the Magna Carta. The third thing is the Northwest Territories Ordinances. The third thing is the Constitution of the United States, so, uh, 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 Declaration of Independence, and the state constitutions that are consistent with the Constitution. Okay. Now, I could go on all night with, with supporting the things that I'm saying and, and, and uh, telling you all these things that I just enumerated. Okay. But we don't have all night. I'm encouraging you, you're not going to learn all this tonight. But if you want freedom, you want to protect yourself and your family and have freedom for your, your children and your grandchildren, your posterity, then get on board what I call the freedom train. Do your part. It doesn't take all of your time, but it does take some sacrifice. Just like Gary is sacrificing here to put out the truth to people, you know, it takes money, it takes effort, it takes sacrifice of yourself. If you're not willing to sacrifice for freedom, I believe it was Samuel Adams said, go home from among us. Bend down and kiss the feet that bind the chains on you. Okay? Because then you're not willing to stand up for freedom. And we don't want to be your countrymen. That was Samuel Adams that said that very clearly. We are the masters. We are the law. What we wrote in those constitutions, there was no government until the constitution was written. <laughs> When the Constitution was written, and you can you can ar argue the Articles of Confederation if you want to, I, I will I will con I will confirm with you, and I will agree with you about that. But this country was was majorly established by the United States Constitution, which created the federal government, but not a federal government. The what was known as the United States of America. The United States of America happened to be a corporation, ten miles square and any and all federal territories that were acquired thereafter. So they have authority over those things under Article 1, Section 8. The powers that I've talked about before. Congress has 20 powers. The President has 6. The Judiciary has 11. That's all they have. Learn those things. Every day of your life, learn at least one more thing that you didn't know before. And at the end of the year, you'll have 365 things, maybe even words, that you can add to your knowledge, that you can add to the support of what's happening. And you can teach it to your children and to your friends and, and talk it. The preachers can preach it from the pulpit. Pastor John preaches it. I thank God that I met a preacher that was willing to do that. Because as George Washington said, study the Constitution, teach it in the homes, schools, uh, schools, churches, colleges, and synagogues. Preach it from the pulpit and let it become the fundamental principle on which all free governments are founded. 
We are supposed to be teaching it. It's supposed to be in the schools. But do you think they teach it in the schools? No. No, they don't. They give lip service to it on September 17th every year. Lip service. Not teach it. Are there any, uh, for the grand jury, are there any qualifications or disqualifications? At this point in our lives, we are so ignorant in this country. The things uh, you've heard I, I can't serve jury duty because something I did 20 years ago. So, would that disqualify me I from... I'm about to answer that. I'm sorry. Okay. In this country, we're so ignorant, we don't really know much about anything. I'm, I'm included in that. What I know today and what I've learned today is a, is a, is a, a product of my being tyrannized by the tyrannical government that, that exists in this country today. And it exists because of our doing nothing. Because of us sitting here and bowing down and kissing those feet that bind the chains upon us. I got fed up with it. I said, if you can't own anything in this country, you cannot be free. Property taxes eliminates your ownership. Mm -hmm. It gives someone else an interest in your <clears throat> property that you toil, that you sweat and work for. They did nothing, but they're stating a claim that they have a right to a piece of that property. They have a right to a portion of your labor. Well, the Constitution forbids all of those things. Both the federal and the state constitutions do. I won't say the U.S. Constitution, excuse me, if I call it federal. That Constitution is for the United States of America. <coughs> the Pennsylvania Constitution, the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania Constitution, is for the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Those officers who serve under it must obey it. Their oath says, I do solemnly swear that I will support obey and defend the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of this Commonwealth. The Constitution of the United States is the 50 states. The 50 states was the ones that got together <coughs> and created that document. The people had to approve it. That created the United States of America. That fiction. But their powers, remember, the powers of the President, six of them, Mainly, they had no power over you, the man or woman. That created a fiction, a corporation, if you will, to deal with foreign affairs. Because England was taxing the colonists so heavily uh, through the Stamp Acts and other acts that they created without lawful authority and forcing the, or taking these people's property from them. They had enough of it. They, didn't, they wouldn't go put up with it anymore. So that was why the War of Independence was fought. That's why the independence was declared. So I kind of lost track as to your question. Ask me your question. Qualifications, disqualifications. Qualifications. You need to know the Constitution. <clears throat> if you don't know it, start learning. Pick up one. I'll give you one right now. i got one in my pocket. I'll give it to you. You want it? You want it? Yeah. Yeah. Start learning. Gary, I think, has some here. If not, we'll get some to him somehow. Start learning. If you have a question, give me a call. I'll help you with it. I'll explain it to you. If I don't know the answer, I'll find it. And I'm telling you, I don't know all the answers, but I know a lot of them. But if I don't know the answer, I'll find it and I'll get it back to you real soon. I have a source to get those answers uh, at my disposal at any time. Um, but the qualifications, what the recommendations are by statute, <laughs> is that you have basically what's called another legal term, clean hands. You should not be a drug addict. You should not have been convicted of a felony or any of these things. But that doesn't mean that you cannot serve on the, on the uh, common law grand jury. Because under the 15th Amendment, which I don't like, I don't like any of them past the 10th. But, well, under the 15th Amendment, you cannot be held to involuntary servitude once your sentence is complete. So if you have been convicted of a crime of any sort, and even a traffic ticket today is a crime, it's not a crime, but you're tried in the criminal court, so if you're charged with it, a criminal, um, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about things of a serious nature. Let's talk about rape, let's talk about incest, let's talk about murder, those kind of heinous crimes. You really should not even want to serve on a grand jury if you're convicted of those things because of the possibility of a uh, propaganda <laughs> campaign against the grand jury. 
you should have more respect for it than that. <clears throat> but that being said, a minor, a misdemeanor, a minor infraction of some sort is not reason for you not to serve on the Commonwealth Grand Jury. Okay? Yeah. Well, what, to put together a Commonwealth Grand Jury, you're talking about you know, time and, and, and effort into it. Basically, what would be the requirements in terms of... I'm going to give you, I'm going to, I'm going to give you a website. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to ask all of you here tonight, go to this website and read, watch the videos, listen to the audios and so forth. You're going to learn a lot about the Common Law Grand Jury. It's New York, spelled out, New York, committeemen.org. Been on there? New York Committee Man? Men. New York Committee Men.org. Okay. It will give you a lot of information about the Common Law Grand Jury. And, it, and they encourage you to do it the same way I'm encouraging you. Okay? Now, I tried to get this thing happen a few years back. Remember, Jim? I wanted the Common Law Grand Jury to get started, and we never got enough interest in it to do it. The time has come today where you're about to lose your freedom forever. It's the only way we can save America is through the common law grand jury. The things that are happening, the, the way that they're taking away your rights, they've infringed upon them in every manner that they want to, needs to stop. And the only way we can stop it is by indicting those, handing down presentments through the common law jury, forcing the indictment of those, and they've got to pay the defense out of their own pocket. They can't use your tax dollars to do it. Indict them. Hand down presentments and force the indictment. And we will start to turn this country around. The first one convicted, the rest of them will run for the hills, I guarantee it. I just forced the tax assessor in Butler County to retire early. Because he had a suit coming against him. You have a lot more power than you think you do. Anytime that I'm here, including in Florida, if you need sessions, we can Skype sessions. And I can talk to you about the court system. I can talk to you about the grand jury. I can do all these different things. We can set up one night a week where you can everybody can sit in. And you name the subject that you want to talk about that night. Don't give me 20 subjects because we won't have enough time and you'll sit there and fall asleep trying to hear it. Give me one subject each week that you want to know more about. And I'll do my best to enlighten you on that subject. And everyone can hear. And then at the end of the session, I'll entertain a few questions, providing I don't want to <laughs> And I'll do my best to answer them. That's my commitment. And it costs nothing for me to do that. It costs me my time. It costs no monetary thing. But I'm willing to do that for freedom's sake. I hope you're willing to take the stand. Uh, and, and as Gary is doing here, support Gary. This is a good meeting place for you. You can start with having your grand jury meetings right here. We are having them in the sheriff's station in Florida, in Marion County. We are in the sheriff's station. And we invite them every meeting to come in and listen. Not one is taken up with them. Hey, aren't, aren't the sheriff supposed to provide a place for you to meet? Yes. The sheriff is a part of it. Yeah. The sheriff is a part of this grand jury. He doesn't control it. Right. But he is to do what the grand jury tells him. And if he doesn't do it, you have authority over him. You are the master. He can lose his job real quick. Yeah, I read where they, they have to, if you don't have a meeting place, they have to provide you one. Yes. And and you can force them to provide it for you in the county. Yeah. And I'm sorry, the county courthouse. Hmm. Yeah. But I prefer meeting in the sheriff's office. You're a lot more closer to the sheriff. Uh, some of them have meeting rooms somewhere in, in their... In Pennsylvania, it's different than it is in Florida. In Florida, the sheriff does everything. Cops hardly do anything. The sheriffs of the counties do it, do it all. And they have satellite stations all over the place. Oh, yeah. uh, but but uh, in Pennsylvania, typically the sheriff's in a, a county courthouse. So that's good. Tell them you want a, you want a meeting room for the county, common law grand jury and begin. You're not going to do it all at once. Don't, don't worry about there's such a, a huge uh, a field of crimes taking place that you could bring presentments against. Pick one and work it. You know, ram it home. And when you, when you convict one, the rest of them will run for the hills. Believe me. They are scared to death of this. They're scared to death of people who have knowledge that I have. 
You can come with me to a government office. I'll show you how to make them start doing this. Is the sheriff going to help I mean, come for the guns? Some are. Some are telling us. That state cop the other day told me point blank. I will turn against them if they come for your guns. What if they don't? <coughs> what do you mean, what if they don't help us? Well, 70 percent of them, he said, we'll, we'll come for the guns. What, what about the ones that won't? What do you do? I want to tell you something. A there policy. is some things happening that very few know about in the police that will side with us in the military as well. Now, I'll tell you this, too. I'm sure you've heard a lot of propaganda. You're going to read when you go on that uh, John Rollin, uh, when you start reading his stuff. You are militia, whether you like it or not. You are the fact that you were born here. <coughs> it is your duty as a militiaman to do these things that I've been enumerating. And if you don't do it, then you're negligent in your duty. Did you have a question? Uh, no. Uh, you know what, I, I'm not sure. I was going to ask. I recently received two citations, traffic citations. I pled not guilty. I had my hearing and I lost. Now, I was going to file an appeal. Is there anything I should know? Well, it's called trial de novo. It means trial anew. Um, they say they don't use what happened in the lower court against you. But you've already been convicted. If that's true, why bother to have the lower court? Okay? They're going to rule against you because you have given evidence of a contract. You gave me your driver's license, right? You gave me evidence of a contract. This is what this, this cop was telling me. He said, why don't they refuse to give it to me? I have no authority. Don't give it to me. He said, you're giving me proof that you have a contract. They're called contracts of adhesion. Don't give it to me. So then rather than go through all these, uh, all of this, I'm just better off just paying this money. I really have no recourse at this point. Well, you do have a recourse. You absolutely can and you do, but you're going to lose because of the contract. However, the contract is null and void because of the false information. Let me give you an example. <coughs> do, do all of you sign your, your vehicle registration cards when you get them back? Why? They tell you to. Well, if I tell you go jump off the entire thing, do you do that too? Because if you don't, and they pull I'm you a, over and they get I'm a hold of it. I'm a law-abiding citizen. They'll find you. I don't. You're, most you're, people don't know that. No, what they'll do is they'll tell you you have to. What they'll do is they'll tell you you have to sign it. Well, you see, you just gave evidence against yourself. I know. Yourself what I, did. What I know. I know. Right. What's an average, the average schmo supposed to do? He don't. He don't have that knowledge. Well, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you what <coughs> you ought to do. But that's right. You don't have knowledge. That's 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 the one. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Let me tell you about that. If you have a registration on you, get it out and look what it says underneath the signature box. It says that you've been appraised of the littering law. It don't say anything about the registration. It don't say anything about your constitution. It don't say anything about nothing except the littering law. Why would you sign that? They didn't give it to you, did they? Why would you sign it? Why would you even give it to the officer to see whether you signed it or not? And I sound like I'm yelling. I don't mean to be. <laughs> I'm just passionate about this. We're can so I, deceived in I, this country. We're conned into everything. <laughs> can I add two things? First of all, who in here wants to be the average schmo? Okay. I so you're, you're you're shuttled into that. Ow. No. Growing up. You. Yeah, but you it's your choice now. No, yeah. Yep. Twenty minutes ago. You had a really un unreal, crazy, nutso excuse to not know. Hosea 4.6 says, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because you've forgotten my law, I will forget your children. So there's no ex you, the law, ignorance of the law is no excuse. That's what the Bible says. Now, that the said, says. you have the, it, the, the law says it as well. The Bible says it's not that, the law. It, let, me, let me correct you. It's not the law. A statute says that. Well, some the, statute, the, some the Bible says, says it. But the law itself, the law is the law of God, the law of people. Right, that's okay? what I said. The Bible the says it. The law of contract, but there is no law of statute. 
The statutes under the Supremacy Clause of the Constitution. I, I, must, I didn't say anything on, about. Hold on, hold on a minute. I didn't bring up statutes. Let did. me finish. Let me finish. The Supremacy Clause requires that all laws must be consistent with the Constitution, or they're null and void. This is what 2D Amjur, right, right, Amjur 2D256 tells you. That's exactly the gist of what I'm talking about. So whenever you read that, remember, a statute inconsistent with the Constitution, that's Article 6, Clause 2, and here's what it says. This Constitution and the laws which shall be made in the pursuance thereof, and all treaties made or which shall be made under the authority of the United States, shall be the supreme law of the land, and judges in every state shall be bound thereby anything in the Constitution to the contrary notwithstanding. Any law, if you want to call it that, statute, code, ordinance, etc., inconsistent with the Constitution is not law. I agree. It's a statute, and it's not binding on you. 16 Amateur tells you that. And no judge has to enforce it, and no judge should enforce it because of the fact of his oath. So your traffic tickets are a legitimate thing, and the recourse you have is to challenge the legitimacy of it because it's not law. It's it's statutory. And you were in a statutory court, you were not in a court of law. Okay, let me let me What's finish that? let me finish what let me let me finish what I was saying. And this this I think may help you. Mm -hmm. We may help everybody. Uh, what's your name? Jeanette. What's your whole name? Jeanette Godson. Do you have a middle name? I do. What's your middle name? Okay, uh, Jeanette, I want stand up. Wow. We just created uh, we just created a contract of adhesion. Oh. Now you're right. under my authority. Wow. Do you understand that? Okay, wait a minute. Say the word, no. The, the word wow. when when the judge asks you if you understand, you say no, judge. I don't stand under. Oh, understand. Wow. So I I got you. Five different ways in a contract of adhesion. They only need one. Okay. When I walk, when I walk in, when I walk in the courtroom with a hat on, and the judge says, "Take off your hat," and I take off my hat, the proper the proper recourse is, "Judge, what will happen to me if I don't take off my hat?" And if he says nothing, then you say, "You know what? I want to take off my hat, so I'm going to take it off, but not because you said so." And then you take it off. Because I'll take it off when I'm ready. <laughs> yeah, I'm ready. basically. It's just like when they say all rise. You're That's right. you're right. Yeah, yeah when, when you do an all rise, you're you're consenting. Yeah, wow. you're you're consenting to his jurisdiction. That is a contract of adhesion. Well, you know, I mean, even when you go for your first job, I mean, you feel that if you don't consent to all these things you have to do right. to get a job, I'm not going to get my job. Well, see, that's that's well, a, a legitimate. That's, that's a, a legitimate thing. Right. That's, that's a, and for a job. It's legitimate. Yeah, right. but it's still a lot of information that I don't what, really. I had to sign well, the Patriot yeah. Act thing and all that. Stuff. Contracts are offered. I said anyway. Yeah. Contracts are offered, acceptance, you can and down consideration. Down. Okay. No. But here's, <laughs> here's what no, here's what this says on your voter on your <coughs> vehicle registration. It says, "I hereby acknowledge this day that I have received notice of the provisions of Section three seven zero nine." of the vehicle code. Did they give you that? If you sign it, you lied. You perjured yourself. They didn't give you that. So don't perjure yourself. That's a lie if you sign it. You it already... Might be on the back side of it. Hmm? It might be on the back it side does tell, It does tell you that, but on the back side, and it, and it, uh, it, but it doesn't say it here. So you sign it, and, and you have to go to the back and look for it, okay? But you weren't given it. Okay, but why would you sign that? You're not required. To, they don't have the authority to make you sign something like that. Why didn't they say that you're you're signing to verify the information? I'll tell you why. Because you don't own the automobile. They do. They own your automobile. You signed it over to them. When you bought the automobile new, somebody who bought it new signed the MSO, Manufacturer's Statement of Origin, over to the state. The state now owns it. That's why you have to do all these things. It's evidence of a contract. This is. Do we have we figured a way yet to get the uh, manufacturer's certificate of origin? One one thing at a time. Okay. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. Yes, you can't. Yes, I can tell you how to do that, but I don't want you to try it yet. Okay. When you're ready, I'll tell you to try. I'll tell you. Let's do it. Let's don't well, just try. He's it. always ready. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, but you can only do one thing at a time. We'll if you do too much, you you won't yeah. win. Well, you know what I call the permits, like the hunting permits, the license, and the gun. Gun permits, I call that people control. Yeah, that's what it, it is. 
It's people yeah. control. That's what it is. What about marriage license? People. What right does the government have in a, in a mar to interfere with a marriage? None. That's right. Your marriage is before God. It's not before the government. When you take the license, you've allowed them to be a third party to your marriage. What happened before 1933 with the marriage license? There 1932. Wasn't any. Yeah, there was. Was it? Yeah, there was. It was for slaves. You keep black people from marrying okay. white people. All right, I will argue that. Is the CDL sort of well that term? Yeah. Uh, CDL is a federal license. It, it, it is a uh, government can regulate for four things: health, safety, morals, and commerce. It's a commercial. I've had a lot of people um, ask, well, if I don't get a, a marriage license from the state. How can I prove? You know, how can I prove that I'm married? How do I get all my records changed? And I called uh, Social Security, and, or, or I looked on their website, and all you need is you can take in your Bible. The yes. old Bibles yes. used to have all the That's information, the way it was. or those like this one. Yep. That's the way it was. But let me, let, you know, I, I, I want to, uh, I want to focus primarily on this common law grand jury. You know, we're, we're talking about a lot of things. It's good. It's good information for all of you to know and to share. And, and I'm happy to do that with you. I, I'm writing with Pastor John. His father is ill and, and I, I don't want to keep him here too long. But let me ask you this. How many of you are you are you are willing here tonight to begin to work with, with uh, uh, those from your county like Gary here from Allegheny County uh, on the common law grand jury. How many of you are willing to yes. take that stand right there? All right. Yes. Yeah. Gary, I want you to get their names. Yeah. And I want you to call on them to do their duty. Maybe Don't I'm back out, folks. Do it. You said you need like 25 people? 25 people. Silence. Random Minimum. 25 people? Minimum. Like just a random 25 people? It doesn't matter. If you sign up to be a, a common law grand juror and, and Gary approves you. You say you're Westmoreland. Westmoreland, yeah. yeah I'm, I live in Westmoreland. Okay, yeah. Okay, then you'll sign up with him. You guys get together, elect a, elect a foreman, learn all you can on that website. Call me if you have any questions. I got a question. And I'll help you. And, and, and let's get it done. Let's, let's do this thing. 67 counties cannot be ignored. Amen. Will you start the presentation with the Hey, I got some. Yeah. Then we're going to call the jury. Oh. Is that what today? Are you going to make my trying to, try to I may have no. take to stop No, it, you know? no, they leave you alone. They stay away from you. You already know too start, much. You're going to be a common one, sure. You already, you know, they're going to start harassing you. Know, like, no. no, they won't. No, they won't. You already know too much. When you file that common law lien, they're not going to mess with you because you already know too much. They are scared of you. Knowledge will destroy evil every time. Good will destroy evil. And, and, and I'll tell you this. Let me encourage you. If you haven't lived a good life, begin living it now. The good life means living according to God's laws. Eat healthy. Okay. Take care of your friends. Take exactly. care of yourself. And your family. Your family is the most important family. thing in this world. By, by doing these things, you're helping to take care of your family. You're, you're leaving freedom for your children. We and our, and our forefathers let it slip away. We need to regain it now. It is, it is so close to, to being totally extinguished. Because look at what they do, and look how you're afraid of them. Look how everybody's afraid. Okay? I'm not afraid. I do. I have no fear. I only fear God. That's it. No one else. Yeah. Get the one. Pardon me? Get the one. Oh, the loan was already done. I want, I want my money back because they borrowed my credit. Uh-oh. I want it back threefold because that's what the Bible says. <laughs> Amen. Have they agreed to give it back to you? No. Well, yeah. <laughs> they will. They're praying about it. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, is this called the Freeman Society? No, or? the Freeman no, no. Society is how we got together as a group down there, and they wanted to call themselves. These people were were uh, involved with what what some of you might know as the RAP program. What? Restore America Plan. Okay. Okay, Tim Turner oh, yeah, was a yeah. very smart man, and he led that in the wrong direction. A lot of people were about to go to jail, and there's some that are in jail because of that right now. He went off, he got, he got power hungry. And, and you know, there's philosophers who have written about that by giving any man too much power, and he will abuse it. That's what Tim Turner did. Okay, this isn't about one man having power. This is about a group of people having power. This is about people 
enforcing their law upon the government. I know you have to go. Can you talk about the guns? What are they going to do with the guns? Are they going to come after them? Or what's going to happen? Do you know? No, you don't mind know. Well, there's a lot of people in this country who will stand up for freedom. There's a lot who will make idle statements when they're drunk, etc. Right. Don't I take my guns, I'll kill every one of them. I hate hearing that statement. I don't want to kill nobody, but I don't want nobody to take my property from me either. I do have the right to defend it. So I can't answer for everybody, I can only answer for me. You said there was a coup in the military and the police? You started to get into Not that. a coup. Not a coup. I, I I didn't a, use the word coup, right. but I did say there's things happening yeah. that you may not know about. There are people who will stand with you and defend you. Percentage-wise? Just curious. I mean, you yeah. have any idea? 30, 70. 30 in favor of you. Well, that can That's grow. pretty good odds out there, really. Well, it is. Hey, we won, we won, the, we won the, the, <laughs> the word for independence with somewhere between 3 and 15 percent. Well, it, it was actually 3 percent. Yep. Three percent uh, won that war. Three percent stood up. What do you do when they come at you at, in the middle of the night by yourself? You have to give them up. No, well, no. It, 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 you know, there's the steps that you take. You, you do what you have to. You don't want to be dead because dead you can do nothing. Ho hopefully your soul will go where you're wanting it to go to the good Lord. But, uh, and your family. you got to worry about that too. That's true. That's true. But remember, knowledge, here's a, here's a quote. Some of you heard this before. Knowledge will forever govern ignorance. And those who wish to be self-governed must arm themselves with the power that knowledge gives. Ask yourself, why have they not come for Hagen Smith yet? If they leave me alive, I will destroy their life. Every one of them. Because I'll drag them to the courts until they will have nothing left, including their labor. They'll owe it all to me before I'm done with them. They're afraid of that. And they will begin to realize... They cannot do those things. You need to possess knowledge. Gather that knowledge. Don't try to do it all at once because you can't. Hey, like can, I said, I've been at this 24 years. Hey, can, can I restate what you're saying? What he's saying is he's only one man, and it's easy for them to take him out. We have no excuse for being chumps. We have to stop being chumps, and we have to become like Hagen has become. Only some of us will be better than Hagen. The only way that Maybe they'll you take will. me out... Well, well now the, the one thing I, I must say, though, you do have an advanced education. Yeah. How many years of college did you go to? None. What, what year did you graduate? Uh, I did not. What, how yeah, far did you go? I went to the 10th grade. How many here went at least to the 10th grade? Yeah. So what's I your went, excuse? I went to the 12th grade. <clears throat> the that one thing I did learn, I learned, I learned to read. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay? And, and I, I, I didn't mean to embarrass you. I just want no, nobody to have an excuse. I'm not embarrassed at all. Not at all. My, I have debated college professors and won. I have debated many lawyers and won on the subject that we were debating. That's not to say that I know everything. That's to say on the subject that we were debating, I was far superior in knowledge than that. That's because I'm self-educated. Most of the founding fathers were self-educated. Most of them were not college graduates, as some might think. Colleges today, in my opinion, are not much more than drug traps, indoctrination centers. They destroy your free will and your free spirit. They you, destroy your ability to think freely for yourself. My, they my, tell you what to think, not how to think. My opinion is if you want your children to go to college or you want your grandchildren to go to college, either you don't care about them or you don't understand where you're trying to send them. But when SWAT team shows up at your house, you're not going to No. Them. I'm not going to stand up violently. I can't. So I'm not capable of doing it in the first place. I will be as peaceful as I can possibly do, and hopefully they'll take me down to jail and, and incarcerate me. And then in the morning, I'll ask for my phone call, and I'll call Bonnie to bring me a paper and pencil. I'm going to start writing lawsuits. I'm going to begin against them immediately, ASAP. No, I'm not going to do anything violent. The Founding Fathers <laughs> left us a peaceful means of solving our problems. That's what I'm doing right now. It's all peaceful. I don't advocate violence. I don't advocate the overthrow of government. I advocate good government according to the Constitution. Good behavior by those entrusted with our authority. That's what the Constitution says. So we'll win in the end. We'll win in the end.
It's going to take a lot of innocent people rested. I read, I read the end of the book. We win. Well, hopefully not killed. I hope no one dies, but you know as well as I do they will. There's some that will die of natural causes because of the grief that they're suffering uh, yeah. by the torment that they are sure. enduring. Sure. So, you know, it's a matter of, of having the tenacity to stand up for freedom, to stand up for your family and your children. I hope that, I hope that all of you will do that. And, and now that you've raised your hand to volunteer for the common law grand jury, I, 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 I beg you. Put your name on the list with these guys tonight. Tom Altman is Westmoreland County. Gary's Allegheny. Jim already agreed to uh, work with us. Uh, he's from Allegheny. Get your name on the list and work with other people you know, your family, your friends. Tell them about it. <laughs> Tell them about that website. Let them go and see what really and truly is and what you can do. This is America. This is your home. If you don't defend it, who will? Exactly. No. And, and, and let me close with this. Help Gary out. He needs your help. Help him. I will help him in every way I can. I thank you all. God bless you. I'm here. Thank you. When's a good day? When's a good day for you to meet for the Commonwealth Grand Jury? I walk a lot of time. I walk around.